Great. Well, I'm really glad you all are here. Um, so the rules are to sign in. So we have record of your attendance to put your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. And um, OK, great. Uh, there are a couple of announcements that I know of. Uh, Jolene, do you have an announcement about MLK Day? I do. Um, so next Monday is a Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, community-wide celebration. And the River Road Community Organization, Social Justice Committee, and the Santa Clara <laughs> Community Organization, Justice Committee, Social Justice Committee, are organizing a meetup at the site of the celebration near Autzen Stadium. And we're gonna walk together from the stadium. I'm not sure if it's to the shed, that's where the location of the in-person celebration has been previously, but we are meeting up out on the north side of Autzen Stadium next Monday at 10.30 and you all are welcome. Um, and if you wanna bring a sign that just says, you know, River Road, we represent, or whatever you want to say. Um, somebody recommended wearing it on a string around your neck so you don't have to carry something the whole way. Some people will be working on a banner to carry, so it should be super fun. I put a, a message out to other neighborhood associations, and I feel like it's a really great way to demonstrate community support for this project. So we would welcome your participation. And I'm going to try to put the poster in the chat if I'm capable. So thank you. Okay. Um, Jackie. Thank you. I just wanted to announce our next um, emergency preparedness meeting, which is coming up on February 7th from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 via Zoom. And we're going to be talking about Map Your Neighborhood and Neighborhood Watch and kind of the tie between those two programs how to talk to your neighbors, even if informally, about preparedness stuff. So I'll put that in the chat, too. Great. John. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to announce that you have an announcement to do, Claire, remember? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm looking at it. On the ARCO executive, we're, we're supposed to report to you any of the actions that the ARCO board has taken since the last meeting. So this is one we took today. The ARCO Executive Board has unanimously voted with the extension of exception of um, Commissioner Dan Isaacson of the Planning Commission because he can't be involved to request that the Planning Commission continue the January 10th hearing on the Willamette River Greenway Code amendments beyond tonight or tonight, tomorrow, since uh, the hearings there or agree that a future hearing will be held to provide adequate opportunity to accommodate the planning staff's request that the process include proposals from the River Road Santa Clara neighborhood plan process. I'm getting ahead of the game here, but I just want to let you know that this may be something that you want to talk about as well when you submit your testimony. In other words, very quickly, Claire will be telling you, but the, the planning commission has been assigned the task of folding our neighborhood plan process for the Greenway into this hearing. And the planning commission has no idea. So we'll leave it at that. Well, thanks, John. Why don't you just go ahead and make the announcement about that? <laughs> well, there's two parts, Claire. OK, so um, partially because of staff shortages, um, you know, we've been working with the Eugene planning staff for uh, many years now um, to do a neighborhood plan. And so the planning staff has proposed putting aside producing land use code for the River Road Corridor, which is the River Road Street, right? Um, which the neighborhood has been working on for several years. Instead, they propose folding this context specific work into a citywide process to be completed after 2026. City staff also proposed to fold our efforts to produce land use codes that protect our vision and uses of the Greenway into the already existing Willamette Greenway Code Amendment process. The community advisory committee has not met due to uh, to review this proposal. So basically, the city is backing out of our collaborative relationship, uh, and we're trying to figure out how to work with that. <laughs> Did you want to say more, John? Your hand is up. 
No, I haven't taken it down yet. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So are there any more announcements or? Okay. Um, Brenda, you're on. You're also on mute. Sorry, I wasn't on the verge of opening my mouth because you sounded like you were talking some more. Uh, I am a, a, on the uh, social <clears throat> justice uh, committee, and I'm also a part of a, a inquiry group that has been looking at um, thinking about making a land acknowledgement for our River Road community organization. What we discovered is there's so much to learn. I, if you are not speaking and you would mute yourself, it would be really helpful. I'm getting feedback, which means that I'm not the only one with a voice open. Thank you. Uh, so we wanted to just give you a glimpse of some education, some things we've learned. And Jan Wooling is going to uh, read um, some a statement, but it's it's kind of a, a snapshot of what we've learned. If you're interested in being part of this uh, inquiry group or learning, exploring, being curious about uh, people who lived here for thousands of years before we ever showed up, particularly, um, you're welcome to do to come and join us, and you can find that information in the newsletter. Jan. This is a, this is a two minute statement. Long before the arrival of European American trappers, later settlers, Native Americans shaped the environment that is now the River Road area. The land immediately adjacent to the River. Willamette River consisted of riparian woodland with willow, black cottonwood, Oregon white ash, and red adler, alder, a transitional forest with big leaf maple and Douglas fir abutted the river lands to the west. These wooded areas transitioned into wide flat prairie grasslands with isolated stands of white oak and other large trees. Though a modern observer might be tempted to call it a wild landscape, it was in fact a human made creation. It was created by bands of people speaking Kalapuya dialects, languages that did not include a word for the concept of owning, owning land. The Kalapuya managed the prairie through periodic burnings, which facilitated their hunting and gathering activities. This native landscape included food staples such as sallow, tarweed, camas, wapato, berries, acorns, fish, game. It was the abundance of game, which was not an accident, which first attracted trappers. The trappers, transitional visitors, may have overhunted the area, but essentially left the landscape in its Native American form. It's important for us to realize that the sculpting and stewardship of the land by Kalapuya people over centuries was what created the landscape that was extraordinarily attractive to the U European settlers from whom most of us are descended. And, and, and that land was what made possible, that design was what was made made possible their success on the land. The end. Thank you so much, Jan. Back to you, Claire. Now you're muted, Claire. Thank you. So um, next, Jan Spencer has been active for several decades on stewarding the Greenway and the riverfront, particularly the Filbert Grove. And he's going to give us a, an overview of the different stewardship projects that have been going on in, in more recently. So Jan. All right. Good. Claire, can I share? Yes, go ahead. You have permission. I have permission. Just click on the share screen. Okay, and then let me do, I am working on sharing here. Uh, I am 
seems a little a little different. I'm not. Are you sure? Yep. Do you see a little green button it says, it says under host, your picture? Host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, it's at the bottom of your screen in the middle. Um, okay. I, okay. I'm okay. I'm making you co-host. I'm sorry that that didn't happen earlier. You see the green the green box. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm good now. Okay. Here we go. I have a little script here. Okay, very good. Very good. Thanks, Jan and Brenda. The Greenway is an awesome opportunity to protect and restore here in River Road with opportunity for many kinds of benefits. I just want to say a few things about the background of the River Road Greenway, a little bit of more current history, and an invitation. And heads up, you might see something during this uh, short slideshow that you might apply to your comments. The Willamette River Greenway is a regional entity. Former governors Tom McCall and Bob Straub both helped bring the Greenway into being in 1971 with the goal to help safeguard the water, plant, and wildlife and to encourage healthy recreation in the Greenway. The entire Greenway extends 187 miles from near Eugene to the Columbia River near Portland. Uh, Oregon State Parks and Recreation manages 10,000 acres of parks and natural areas along the Greenway. And State of Oregon planning goals 5 and 15 have a great deal to do with how the Greenway is managed. The Willamette River watershed totals 11,000 uh, square miles watershed and over 70% of Oregon's population lives in the Willamette River watershed. The Greenway came into being in Eugene in 1976. And you can take a look here on the slide. These are maybe only some of the sexier types of uh, wildlife to be found in the Greenway, beaver, turtles, lots of wildlife in the Greenway. And the Greenway is, oh man. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, the Greenway is a popular destination for walking, biking, dog strolling, picnics, swimming, kayaking, fishing, gazing at the river, spotting wildlife, and under certain conditions, there's a surf break in the river. <laughs> Roadway. I've seen it. I haven't done it myself, but uh, I've seen it. And uh, there are uh, the mixed use bike path along the Greenway dates back to about 1981. In the 1990s, concerned neighbors stopped plans for a large indoor soccer facility along with expansive parking lots. And thanks to that citizen action, we now have Razor Park instead of acres of pavement. And then also in uh, the 1990s, concerned neighbors stopped a potential highway bridge that would have connected River Road to the shopping mall. Citizen involvement continues to be uh, a, a critical to safeguard and restore the Greenway. Property in the Greenway does not necessarily mean that property is protected. Citizen involvement also delivers much to celebrate over the years in the Greenway right up to the present. The Greenway has seen many work parties, river road cleanups, social and <coughs> events, all for the good of the Greenway. So what we're gonna do now is just see a few quick highlights and some uh, several locations in the Greenway.
Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I need to say this. A core part of restoring the Greenway is citizen volunteers. Uh, Razor Park, the Filbert Grove, Heron Slough, and Maynard Park all have a lead organizer. And the city provides uh, on site assistance, helps create a work plan, and helps organize work parties and provides tools for those work parties. So uh, let's take a look here and I need to move this here. Razor Park has benefited greatly from many work parties and volunteers over the years. Razor Park is a unique opportunity to restore habitat. Last spring for the first time, I saw hundreds of flowering native plants, the product of countless hours of work by dozens of volunteers and a short distance away, a patch of ground not yet replanted was simply a bland green. And already I'm told long lost species are returning to Razor Park. And of course, each adopted location in the Greenway has a leader and Becky Riley and her partner Peter have been leading the charge in Razor Park for quite some time. The Filbert Grove is located at the end of McClure at the Greenway and dating from around the mid 1940s uh, and the Grove counts over 65 Filbert trees. Up to the year 2010, the Grove languished in a jungle of English ivy and blackberries. Restoration did begin about 2010. The city arranged a Filbert professional to help make a work plan. The trees have been pruned and there have been dozens of work parties over the years with volunteers from local schools, student groups from UO, church youth groups, and people who just like to help out. And the Grove is open to anyone in the fall for collecting filberts. So here's just a couple photos. If you know the river, you might recognize these places. These places are available for adoption. People can adopt parts of the Greenway and lead their own charge and look out for the habitat. River uh, uh, Arco is wanting to step up this effort. There's a process. If you're interested, say something in chat and we'll contact you. Uh, there is definitely a process to uh, participate. Here's another picture here of the river. Uh, you can see all this English ivy here. There's lots to do, lots of fun. And then this was a work party several years ago to spread uh, mulch on trees that have been planted in the river uh, in the Greenway. You might recognize some of the people here. Another big event was Sunday Streets several years ago. River Road hosted Sunday Streets and we had lots of activity down here in the River uh, Greenway. And then of course you might recognize this. Uh, this is the kiosk and Cameron Ewing uh, is responsible for this along with the participation of Arco, Cam's dad and other volunteers. The kiosk is a great example of making use of the city's neighborhood matching grant program. And that program is where citizens can propose a project that will enhance the neighborhood. And if accepted, the city matches sweat equity with grant money. And this picture here, you may or may not recognize uh, sometimes we have a little bit of flooding in the Greenway. So this is Heron Ponds, and this is a habitat that is benefited by the attention of Cat Allison and her husband, Bill, who moved to Arbor Street uh, after helping Razor Park some numbers of years ago. And also in past years, they have hosted up to four to five work parties per year for remo removing invasive species and also planting trees to help screen those houses that are along the, the, uh, the greenway as well. And next, uh, 
this is if you're uh, out on the Greenway on a Sunday morning in the summer, particularly, you'll see there's a dance jam that goes on every Sunday morning uh, along the Greenway there next to Heron Ponds. There's uh, dance music and a bubble machine and up to 50 people participate. It's really a lot of fun. I need to move this up. And this next picture is Maynard Park. And uh, here at Maynard Park, we have uh, Jen Hornaday. Uh, she's maybe something like the, uh, the cardboard queen. And she's been uh, organizing work parties here. She's, uh, we planted lots of trees and taken care of lots of trees uh, in Maynard Park over the years and God, this, thing is, this slider here is a little bit of a, of an issue uh, okay and this also along the greenway there are several plantings of native species along the greenway and this is a work party at one of those locations and here is a part of heron slough then this is an area that could be adopted as well. And this is what Heron Slough, of course, looks like when you, uh, when you arrive to the Willamette River. This is an active slideshow, so we lost the picture there, but that's okay. There's been another several uh, events in the Greenway over the years, the promenade. And uh, over, uh, there's been about two promenades. The effort has been to simulate the wonderful lake or oceanside public promenades so popular in places like Nice, Baritz, Barcelona, Menaggio, and Alguero. These are places where it's simply nice to walk and meet and greet, and we can make better use of our own uh, greenway and turn this into our own uh, Lungo Fiume, which of course is Italian for along the river. So there are several very important organizations that exist to help safeguard the uh, and the well-being of the Greenway. Uh, there's the Greenway Guardians, and they engage in educational outreach and collaborate with various organizations and civic engagement to protect the Greenway. Friends of Razor Park strives to restore the 10 acre oak savanna and prairie for native plants, animals, birds, bees, and people. And then there is Willamette River Keepers, and they serve as the eyes and ears and the voice of the Willamette River uh, and the Greenway for the past 25 years. So the Greenway has something for just about everyone and the benefits of helping in the Greenway. It's great for exercise, for the critters and the landscape. It's also meeting people and finding out about other good stuff happening in River Road, like becoming involved with ARCO and maybe its preparedness or human rights committees. People might meet others in the Greenway and decide they wanna help each other turn their front yards into gardens. Not quite the end. We do have a work party planned on Saturday, March 4. Uh, that's Saturday, March 4, and there'll be information about that in the newsletters from 10 to noon meeting at the Filbert Grove at the end of McClure. Uh, there is plenty to do, removing ivy, working with the Filbert trees, and also some new pruning. There's plenty to do. Uh, we invite you. And again, there are opportunities to adopt other sections of the Greenway. There is a process for doing that, but we can help you uh, with that task. There's plenty for everybody, and we can uh, really use the Greenway to uh, bring River Road, uh, 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 accelerate our community building, 
and repairing and restoring the landscape and have a lot of fun doing that. So if you've got questions or comments, please put that in chat and we'd be glad to uh, help you find out what you need to know to be involved with the Greenway. Thanks, that's it. Good job, Jan, thank you very much. Um, I hope you took notes, everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this on YouTube at some point and we can link okay, to it. Okay, very good. Um, so next we're gonna turn to uh, John and Julie who will tell, be telling us more um, would you take down the screen share, Jim? Uh, Jim? So they'll be telling us more about the coding process that we're facing next with the planning hearing. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Jan, for a great presentation there. The beautiful Willamette River Greenway has been a vital source of physical and mental healing during this raging COVID pandemic of the last few years. The Greenway embraces our community and is really the crown jewel of our neighborhood here, the River and Garden District. This precious resource provides habitat for numerous species of flora and fauna, as well as experiences in recreation, everything from fishing and boating, swimming, to wildlife watching and exercising. In addition to providing transportation options, and a soul sustaining interface with the natural world. The city of Eugene is currently in the process of developing code amendments to the Willamette River Greenway. Now is the time for all of us to weigh in. We hope to provide information this evening that will help us to do so. It's important to remember that the Willamette River Greenway boundaries are not changing. A little bit of background, as Jan mentioned, in 1973, Oregon adopted 19 statewide planning goals. They're not mandatory. Instead, they're guidelines for local comprehensive planning. Statewide planning goal 15 is the Willamette River Greenway to protect, conserve, enhance, and maintain the natural, scenic, historical, agricultural, economic, and recreational qualities of lands along the Willamette River. The guideline states that this would be done to the greatest extent practicable, and therein lies the problem. Such subjective interpretation has made it difficult to defend and protect the Greenway. This has resulted in a serious encroachment of construction in the Greenway, as hearing officials, commissions, and even the courts have been unable to use Goal 15 to deny permitting and enforce the Greenway uh, goals. Let's take a closer look at some key points for you to consider. And John will begin with some key points. Thank you, Julie. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick to show you where the Greenway is, and then we'll get into the details. Can you see that map? I assume you can. Um, okay, this is the boundary of the urban growth boundary of the city of Eugene, all the way over here, I-5, et cetera. This green area is the greenway, and I'm gonna zoom in to be a little more specific so you can see what we're talking about, and I'll make this quick. So the area that is green is the greenway. Imagine that. It, on our side of the river, it ends at Randy Pepe, um, Beltline because the urban growth boundary ends along on this side of the uh, um, gravel pits. But as it goes along, um, it's it's an odd thing. We all think of the greenway, or we would think of the greenway as being along the river. But when they created the boundary, they also included public land. So all the area that's in the sewage treatment plant is in the greenway. Um, Oops, give me just a second. I'll get back to where I want to be. Uh, sorry. Here we go. But in our neighborhood, the greenway can be as narrow as you see here along Copping, which in, is primarily in private property. Um, this is uh, Maynard Park, as you recognize, 
the boundary generally goes along the the uh, West Bank Park, but it also encroaches into private properties as well. So there are a lot of people who, um, if they want to develop their property, they have to get a greenway permit to develop, especially in this area down here. So um, this the uh, link for this map is available to you on our PDF, but I just wanted to show you how um, unique it is. So this green line very quickly is the top of bank and this 100 foot red line is where they're proposing for the most part to make the greenway setback and we'll, you'll see that in the proposed code. So um, I'm gonna shut this off. Um, let's see, let me bring up the PDF of the document that, that has the points that we're trying to make here. John, can, John, can you explain what you mean by a setback? Um, the proposed code says that there are certain things that can cannot occur within the setback. For example, you can't have housing within the setback, although you may have noticed that there is housing already in the setback up around copying. Um, they are grandfathered in. So I, I apologize. The uh, talking land use gets very complicated very quickly, but I will do my best to try to make it sensible. So um, this document um, is available on the ARCO website. So that's riverroadco.org. And it has the key points that we're reviewing today, as well as information on how you can testify. So I'm gonna work my way through this. Um, the first key point that we want to make is that, is the one that we talked about earlier at the beginning of the meeting, the planning commission is unaware that this process is the way that we're going to finish out our work on the Greenway code that we want to do through the neighborhood plan. They're totally aware, unaware of that. I tried to send them a message today and I found out there's no way to send a message to the planning commission but we will make this point tomorrow. We're gonna to request that they not move forward on the doc, the planning effort that they're doing. Uh, forgive me, let me back up just a little bit. The purpose of this hearing tomorrow is to review proposed code that is designed to provide a clear and objective path for people who apply for a greenway permit. If you wanna develop within the greenway, which I showed you earlier, you have to get a permit. In the past, the code that um, Julie alluded to basically said, to the maximum extent practical, preserve wildlife, provide access to the river, et cetera, et cetera. But the problem is to the maximum extent practical is impossible to define. And hearings officials in the past have just said, I don't know what to do with this, go ahead and do whatever you want. And that's been our experience in the neighborhood. So, the the city is trying to add this clear and objective path, which is an option for a developer that if they choose, they can take that path and there are clear and objective standards that tell them what they can and can't do. And it still has to go to a hearings official, but it's not as um, arbitrary as it is now and frankly unenforceable. So, so we're asking them to take the time to extend their process to do what the planning staff has asked them to do to look at what we're trying to do within the neighborhood plan as well. And I just threw in an example here that one of the things they could do is say that for those properties that are zone C2 that are in the greenway, which are allowed to be have buildings that are 120 feet tall, maybe that should be 60 feet tall. Just, just an idea of what they might wanna talk about. Um, Let's see. So um, we know there are going to be questions. So please hold them till the end and we will um, definitely talk about those. Okay. So the other thing that the concern number two here that we have is that if they're going to have a clear and objective path, they should include all the issues that are covered within what's called the um, discretionary path. And these are the ones that we uh, 
Julie and I went through that are in the discretionary path that are not even mentioned in the clear and objective path that they're proposing. Uh, maximal possible landscape area, open space or vegetation between the activity and the river. Um, necessary and adequate public access to be provided. We'll talk about that later on our seventh point. Protection of significant fish and wildlife habitat is identified in the Metro Plan Natural Assets and Constraints Working Paper. I, I don't even know what that document is because I can't find it, but it's pretty clear to us that um, protecting wildlife is supposed to actually be done through another process, which is um, goal six, and that's done through the natural resource and the water conservation overlay, which are only 100 to 120 feet from the river. So basically the way the city is set up is, I guess wildlife doesn't exist more than 120 feet from the river, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, protection and enhancement of the national vegetative springs. Um, fringe, there's a piece of the code as they define it, which we will talk about with number five that is problematic. And finally, the preservation of scenic qualities and viewpoints as identified in the Metro plans working paper. I think this is the biggest issue we have in our neighborhood is we want to retain the look and feel of the river. There's uh, in our neighborhood at least, and there's nothing that um, actually speaks to that in their proposed code. So those are a couple of the issues that we have and I'll turn it over to Julie to talk about this next one, the tree okay. preservation zones. Thank you, John. Before we do, if you could please put up the, um, the diagram that shows the delineation of uh, zones one, two, and three, so we have a context for this next point. Sure, um, give me a second, but Thank please you. talk. Yes, I will do. Um, John will be putting up a di diagram to show you in relationship to the river, uh, in addition to the setback zone that he mentioned, that there are tree preservation zones that are labeled one, two, and three. And these are generally 100 feet strips and um, starting with one closest to the river and three the furthest away. In addition, they're proposing a 10 foot native plant strip buffer. Uh, so those are some of the language that will help you to understand some of these next uh, points that we're bringing up, which point number three specifically talks about in the Willever Rammer Greenway tree preservations one, two, and three, when located on public land, should be required to only be planted with species that are native to the Western United States. So basically what this means is that we're asking for no exotics to be planted on those public lands. We know that flora and fauna evolve together and in order for that interaction to take place, we need to keep exotics out of there. The, um, oftentimes exotics are beautiful and that's great if people wanna put those into their own landscape. But in order to preserve the natural qualities of the greenway, we need more native species so that that can help pollinators, birds, and other um, fauna. Uh, and here is the, uh, the diagram that we were discussing. Oh, John, we lost. Did I, did I, okay, here you go. Just to give people just a moment. So if we look down, starting at the very bottom of the screen would be the river itself, then going to the top of the bank, the greenway setback area, zone one, zone two, and zone three. So that's what the reference is, that in each of those zones, if it's on public lands, it would be planted with native species only. Our next point builds on that. There will be no adjustments allowed for the 10 foot native plant landscape buffer zone immediately outside the Willamette River Greenway setback. Adjustments in code language referred to exceptions. Oftentimes developers will petition for adjustments and that basically allows them to circumvent uh, the code. So we're asking for no adjustments within that. that. Our next point, the proposed 10 foot width and the landscape two standards for the 10 foot native plant landscape buffer, which is immediately outside the Willamette River Greenway setback are inadequate. 
we're requesting that that 10 foot buffer be expanded to 20 feet and that the standards are moved up to the landscape three, the high screen landscape standard. And I'll, I have more information on that in just a moment. Additionally, the buffer should be required only for lands located immediately adjacent to parklands. So what this means is that these standards wouldn't apply for people who have land that are, for example, adjacent to River Road itself. So it's for adjacent to the parkland. And the L3 standards briefly require a, a higher screen, uh, so six feet tall bushes uh, that would be planted in five gallon con from five gallon containers and would grow in within five years. There'd be one canopy tree per 30 linear feet and that living plant materials would cover a minimum of 70% of the re required landscape area within those five years. So they're higher standards, which means that we're going to get more of a buffer zone quicker. Our next point, number six, all pathways that are constructed on public land will be open to public use. This seems obvious. However, there have been in the past and are currently being considered that some of the developments um, are petitioning to have private pathways link their properties through public land to the bike path. And it is our feeling that public land should be for public use. So if there are pathways that are constructed, they should be open to the public. John? Yeah, I wanna to point to this part of the document. Again, that's available to you on, the, on our website. Um, first of all, this, in order to make our argument for the, the bike, the, the pedestrian access is being public, um, Goal 15 itself specifically states adequate public access to the river should not shall be provided for, not private access. And then again, they talk to it in another part of their um, greenway or their greenway uh, code in the state level as well. And in the greenway permit code process, the the discretionary okay. path, it calls for necessary. Okay. Data access. So if you decide to testify, those are two things from that document that you will find useful to make your argument that we should not allow um, people to have a gate at the end of their bike, their path going to the bike path so that only their clients, residents or whatever can, can access the river. We think that's a very bad precedent to set. So let me go back up here um, where we're at. Um, Number seven is that the information that they provided is inadequate. We're, we talked about that tree preservation zones one, two, and three. Um, the reality is for a lot of the greenway, especially in River Road, that 300 foot buffer for trees retention um, is within the park. So those trees are already protected. So. I think the Planning Commission thought we're doing a great thing. We're going to provide this 300 feet of tree protection that isn't there before. In reality, it is there already. So we're just asking that before the Planning Commission considers what they've done, they should see what the impact of that is. Um, the um, other thing that I, I wanted to talk to you about here um, is that Either they should look at all those additional requirements from the clear objective path that we mentioned there, be added, anything they've added from into the clear and objective process should also be incorporated into the discretionary path or eliminate that discretionary path whatsoever. Because as I mentioned early, if the developer has a choice of do I go the clear and objective path or the discretionary path, if they have a good lawyer, the lawyer will say, well, let's go the discretionary path because when we go before the hearings official, we just argue that it's impossible to determine how to hold these standards so you'll be able to do whatever you want. So we can craft this wonderful, clear and objective code that does everything we want, but as long as we have this gate that's wide open for them to go through a discretionary path, it's, it's worthless, frankly. Back to you, Julie. 
Right. And finally, for number nine, we believe that a public process should be required for the sales or transfer of all parkland. We put this in here because there have been in other instances in other places of Eugene where parkland has been swapped or traded or sold in order to um, purchase or uh, swap for other land that they may want. So we want to protect what we have. And in fact, we really want to encourage that whenever possible, that additional land will be acquired and added into public lands and protection along the Greenway. There are private properties that may become available. And we believe that it should be a primary goal of our city and county to purchase those lands for the public use. Thank you. I think we're ready for some questions and we'll try to provide the best answers possible. We'd like to um, also acknowledge at this time, code language is extremely complex. It's dry. It's unless you have an extensive background. And I have to be honest, from my point of view, uh, three college degrees has not been particularly useful in um, understanding this. So we understand that this is a complex but important topic. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, some of the questions that are here um, in the chat. Um, Harry asked if the Metro plan referenced in the link that he put in there is the current Metro plan. Actually, the, I, I believe when it comes to the Greenway, it is Harry, but you need to realize that the city is in the process of incorporating the work that was done in Envision Eugene into a new metro plan. So that's not true everywhere. Um, uh, Brenda asked what CNO was. That's, that's the clear and objective path. And she asked what the discretionary path is. The way that the code is set up, there has to be a clear and objective path for anybody who declares that they're development has needed housing in it. And the state has defined needs housing to be all housing. So when a developer has to go through a process such as the greenway permit, a plan unit development, a subdivision, they have to have two paths to go through, have to be given two alternatives of which way they wanna go. Either a discretionary path that has um, a different set of code standards that they would have to meet but generally requires some sort of interpretation by a planning director, uh, a hearings official, a planning commission or whatever. And that's why it's called discretionary. Clear and objective, it should be, you open the code, look at it, and you can easily determine, is it 35 feet tall or not? Is it 10 feet from the um, boundary of the property, et cetera? Those things that are easily um, identified. And the city did not have clear and objective pass for most of their code and this is what they're doing to try to to be able to make them available I, john um, if i might add at this point uh, the discretionary path is what has traditionally been in place and that's why we have some of the egregious development we have had in the greenway and so that's why we're really urging and promoting the idea of getting these clear and objective standards and weighing in and what those clear and objective standards should be, because we believe that this is going to help us have some real protection. John, will you stop the screen share? Yeah, I just wanna show you one more thing in that and I will be happy to let it go. Um, at the end of this document, um, there are, relevant links for all the things we've referred to. There's also in that interactive map I showed you can find there. There's a link to what the goal 15 and goal five natural resource goals are. And then all important is how can you can testify. Before 5.30 tomorrow, you can send any testimony you wanna to send to this, this URL. Um, if you want to provide oral testimony, there's information about how to do that. If you only want to watch the webcast, um, that's it as well. So that's the last of what I wanted to show there. Thank you. So um, um, if you would raise your hand using the um, reaction button, um, I will try to answer your questions on a whole lot of stuff we just fire hose to you. 
John, before we begin taking those questions, I'd sure. like to go ahead and just remind people that um, you can send in written testimony via email. You can also join the hearing and provide oral testimony. It's They generally give you two to three minutes to do so, or you can do both. We also will be requesting tomorrow that they keep the record open an additional seven days. Thank you. So the, the, if they do, that will give you more time to testify, but don't yeah. count on it. Shava. Hi, thank you so much, um, everyone who worked on this. I just need sort of a quick and dirty like paragraph of what to write in my testimony. I'm I'm also a board member for Roving Park Players, and we've done plays in, along the river. And I want to let the board direct board of directors know that this is happening in case any of them want to write. In the material that you provided, is there like key points? I mean, I did take notes, but are there? Is it already written up? What what I could write just to make it easy. Well, we hope that those nine points were the ones that you would write about, those that resonated with you. And we also included places within the proposed code where that is covered. So um, I, Hava, we had hoped that would suffice. And Hava, in addition to that, because you know we felt that if we gave key points that people could write in the ones that resonated for them and also put forward their values, but we also understand that time is imperative. So um, the Greenway Guardians had put together a sample message and you could go to their website too or contact me directly and I'll put my email uh, in the chat room. Thank you. Yeah, and if you could put the Greenway Guardians up as well, that would be helpful, Julie. And I'll put mine in too. Julie. And once, once again, the it's on the River Road Community Organization website, which I just put in the chat. Oh, great. Yeah, this document is there, so you can grab it all there. Jolene? Thanks. So um, I, too, am a little confused. <laughs> feel like I need some help to try to put this together in a way that's cohesive. And I did get the Greenway Guardians email with three or four kind of highlighted points. And I'm just wondering if Julie or John or both of you, if it's 802, if you could just do again, like a you know, top five points to discuss or mention. Um, I feel like, you know, we got some important background in terms of understanding what these points are, but honestly, I and I've been reading this, I feel like it would be really helpful to me to kind of hear it all again in a more synthesized way, maybe not going into all of the details so much, just so I can pull out some highlights. And I do have a question just as an aside, why do they have the discretionary path option if they've been working to create clear and objective standards? I don't even understand why that's in there and maybe we don't need to talk about it. But um, anyway, if, if you all could just like do it again, I would really appreciate it. So that's- Well, I'm, I'm picking one out of the list here. Number three, Willamette River Greenway tree preservations one, two, and three were located on public land should be required to be only planted with native species. I mean, that's what we're suggesting you might say. Okay. Um, All those um, key points, if you take the first sentence that we put, um, then I think that you could just very quickly put together a message if you, cut and pasted. So the, yeah, number six says all pathways constructed on public land will be open to public use. Um, I, I, I guess I don't understand your question. We really tried to, to make them to sync for you, so you could put that into your own words if it resonates with you. Sue? Hi, it why do they get to do this at all? Why do we have, it seems like we have very little say about it. This is something that was started back in the 70s. Ruth Bascom, who was a visionary, and these people only vision apartments along the bike path. Well, Sue, the, the way that Oregon Land Use Code works is that there are 
policies and requirements that then get quantified into a, a set of rules as to how people can develop. If, if you, the, your, your issue may be the way that Goal 15 was originally written, which was designed to preserve the greenway, but it also was to allow development within the urban growth boundary. So unless an area is specifically set aside for the purpose of conservation only, it's available for development. And that's the way Goal 15 was aside? read. Pardon? Put like any part of what they've got in mind. Well, that, we the greenway the, set aside. The argument would be made, I believe, by some people that the the West Bank Park is what's set aside to protect the Greenway. That can't be developed. But it's a philosophical question that I'll be able, I'm more than willing to have with you later. It's a legacy land. I hear you, Bobby. Got from the 70s. Make that argument in Once your, your testimony, gone. please. Bobby Joe? Yeah. Um... I have the same issue. I mean, you covered a whole lot of territory there, and most of it, it's like, I agree. And, you know, frankly, it came way too hard, way too fast for me to take a personal position on any of it, except to say, wow, people have been putting a lot of very specific work into implementing uh, set of principles that came with the greenway and yes the city planners should respect the input of this neighborhood group and the rec all the recommendations and you know what what do you call the recommendation package that i should be um are uh, you might mention Not you might say if, if you want to go that route is please consider the points made by John Belcher for the River Oak Community Organization. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sandra? That is exactly what I was just gonna ask. I, I appreciate that what you've done is to try to articulate points that people can take away that they wanna prioritize or own or cherry pick, so to speak. But I wanted to get to what you just said, John, and that's what I wanna do is send an email that says, as a you know, 24 year resident of this community, I feel strongly and I support the hard work by my River Road community organization and I support everything that was put forward by John Belcher. So you just gave me that language. So thank you. That's That was exactly what I needed. Okay. Thank you. Good deal. Harry. So, so I have a question and a comment. Um, my, my question is if there's been any outreach to any of the other environmental groups. I know 350 Eugene has showed up over and over and over again, it would be great to have, you know, the power and numbers that they bring brought in on something like this. And uh, a, a thousand friends of Oregon as well, since this is a land use issue, seems like it would be a great resource. And then uh, I saw Stefan put in the in the chat there that it's possible to just testify you don't want any development in the Greenway period. Um, so I was going to suggest something along those lines, just asking the Planning Commission to hold off, to slow down, to, to get public input. Um, Anything along those lines, just speaking up and, and adding to the numbers would be helpful. So thank you. Okay. Um, to answer your question, Harry, we have reached out to the Upper Willamette Soil and Water Conservation District, the um, River, the Willamette River Keepers, and then also the Greenway Guardians. But in the time limit we had, that's as far as we could take it. Um, what you, need, what you need to realize is my home is in the Greenway. Um, are you saying that I should tear down my house? Because that's essentially what you're saying when you say no development within the Greenway. There's a perception that the Greenway is sacrosanct and no development should occur there. But there are places where the boundaries of the Greenway go all the way out to River Road. So I that's the challenge. John, I think that, that that is true, that and it does not say that there cannot be any development, and obviously there is, but I think that it would be a cogent point to make that you don't want any additional development within the Willamette River Greenway. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. Bobby Joe, do you still have your hand up? Okay. So we're going to turn it over to Brenda, and we... Um, 
do have time to do this next step, which is a breakout group. So Brenda, take it away. Well, thank you. So, um, and John, I have been uh, totally unable to uh, make a link to your PDF. I did put, we did put the links that take you to the website and then you can look on the website to find things. Okay, so I'll I, put it I, up for you. If you can put that in, it would be helpful. I uh, I am going to put us into groups of three to four people each, which means you have a little bit more time to talk to each other. And in each of those groups, I will uh, hang on. I'm going to just hang on for just a moment. Get my questions for you and hope uh, here. I'm going to ask you in those small groups to talk about, first of all, just go around the, the three of you or the four of you individually, what do you value and love about the Willamette River Greenway? And then which of those items you heard or what caught you? What did you hear them say that you want to respond to? I know it was overwhelming. Um, I can barely find a couple myself, but you also have, uh, I'll try to re-put that link even to the website, you can go to the website while you're in your small group and look up the document and read through it together to each other. You you all are pretty official or efficient at doing Zoom meetings and having multi things happening. So I invite you to go. It's about uh, it's a ways down, but it'll say these nine points and you'll begin to see exactly what they were reading to you. So go and think about what it is really get, catches your craw or what thing you want to say. Maybe, as they, you all just said, I want to just say whatever John and Julie said, that's what I say. Uh, and then um, we're going to ask you when you come back, will you write an email tonight or early tomorrow or be willing to do a public hearing? Um, so I'm going to Let's see. I got to come back to you guys. While you're doing that, Brenda, I did put the, a link to the document that we were showing you today. Okay. If you, what's in the chat right now will disappear when you go into your small groups. I believe, I'm not positive, but I think it might disappear. So if you if you go back where John just gave you that link and want to open it, it'll be in front of you when I send you to groups. So I'm going to pause a minute so people have time to do that. And don't worry about copying the questions. I'm going to send them to each group after you get there. But if you want to open John's link, uh, and now I'm going to send you to groups, and we'll be there. Um, have I spent, we had 15 minutes, so we're going to spend 10 minutes in our small groups. All right? Here we go. And I'm sorry, that link is incorrect. It's a previous okay. version. I'll have to put it up again. Yeah. I'm going to send you to your rooms and you can uh, can already be in the other pieces. And John, you're going to get sent to a room. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm looking at these rooms and thinking I need a few more people in a couple of them. Some of you only have three. Are... We're getting, I'm going to go back to uh, the city council. I'm going to uh, stop that. Sorry, my group just we lost a couple of people, so I'm going to make the rooms a few a little smaller. No. And this is before the commission, not the city council. Deborah is in only one by herself. And I'm not anywhere. Well, uh, I'm going to join Deborah Bar Barhard. Okay, thanks. We're not I don't see that people have. Julie, did you want to say something? No, I thought Claire was in our group. I just saw her. Um, no, and you, you should have joined group five, Julie. 
You have oh, not joined your group five. You need to I say yes. Join button. You didn't? It says you haven't joined. Okay, I hit the button and that's how I got into this screen. Okay. All right. uh, I'm going to put you in room four because I, I have an option to do that. Bye. Bye See bye. if that works. And I'm going to move him. Join again. Six. Try that.
Oop, you're coming back. You're coming back. No, it still won't come. <clears throat> I apologize that you ended up in very, very small groups because we had 43 people listening to the presentation and 22 people participating in small groups. So I flipped us into 10 groups and then should have had it more like seven or eight. Uh, I had the privilege of a, a, a personal bit of instruction from John. So it worked, it worked out okay for me. <laughs> there you go. So as I was saying, I'm, I apologize that you only had one other person, but we were wrestling with some pretty important topics and I hope that that gave you some insight. Um, I, feel, I feel totally illuminated. Good, good. Illuminated or eliminated, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> so in that vein, I apologize. It took me three times to get that link for the document right, but the last one is the right one. Third try. Okay, and there I is apologize. A, there is the link that we have been sharing multiple times that takes you to the website. Um, so, um, Claire, you have a closing question, or I can lead us into that. You want to? You want to pose that? Uh, do you want me to ask a poll about who, how many? Oh, so our objective here is to get engagement with this hearing process and have people testify. So um, in your responses board, reactions, it says reactions, if you click on that, could you give us a green check mark if you plan to send an email tonight, tomorrow, or just, or testify to the live hearing. And let's see if I can figure out. So of everybody who's still here, we have a few people are still checking. Oh, of course. Fifteen have green check. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. The participants so, tells you without counting. Yeah, yeah. And I don't see your <laughs> check mark. Are you not going to write anything, to Claire? <laughs> I checked. Mine is checked. <laughs> John's not, but he's going to testify. I, I, can't find it. I see there that it Chelsea, Chelsea has a question. A hand. Okay. Up. Thank you, everybody. So that's a good counting. Like you know, sixteen folks. Um, they should hear from us. Mm -hmm. You can you can get rid of your check marks now. <laughs> okay. Did you hear me say Claire has a question? No, Charles. Oh, Charles, 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 excuse me. Um, yeah, at John, the last link you put in here still shows that that the document is in your trash. The third one. <laughs> the last one that is in here. So, I assume it's the last one you put in. So I. The one that says "sorry, third try" should work. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. I don't know why. Could Send it post, to everyone. Could you post it again, please? Okay. Uh, and it, yeah, frankly, we spent all the time drilling the document and not how you could reach it. So the other, the other thing is. All of that information is on the website. And that works too. Uh, that's another way to get to it. It's not uh, John, I don't see it on, on the website. It just looks like how I made it look yesterday. I don't see your improvements. Well, We've looking, had been having technical difficulties this week, folks. Claire, I'm looking at it and I see it. Okay, it must be in my cache then. So that's the easiest way to get to it is riverroadco.org slash news and it should be right oh, yeah. there. And that glit, that link takes you to the new edited version. Uh, yeah, absolutely. When I yeah. just that's the best way to get there. So hopefully we'll see you all tomorrow at the hearing. Yeah. You know, one of the things I'm going to talk about is if you want to have a public hearing where people get involved, you don't schedule it after Thanksgiving and hold it right after New Year's. <laughs> Yeah, Jolene. 
You're muted. I know. I thought we were ending. Are we ending? I was saying bye. <laughs> well, why don't we leave this meeting saying, going around, we have 30 seconds. Do that quick. Uh, I'm leaving this meeting with, start with, uh, I'm leaving this meeting a lot more aware, understanding a lot more than I did before I started. Uh, Jan and then Lynn. Oh, people move. Oh well, I just uh, wait, I understand wait. that there's there's. You're asking me something. I, I'm saying quick, real quick. <laughs> Good, fine. Everybody, do well. Testify. <laughs> Lynn uh, and then Misty. Come and work in the Greenway. Oh, I was I'm inspired by all of you to um, pull some weeds in the Greenway. Yeah, some invasives. Thank you. <laughs> I'm I am inspired to compare the west side of the the river to the east side and say we don't <laughs> want we don't need another east side. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Bobby, Joe, and then Gerald. Uh, I'm gonna write an email. Thanks, <laughs> Gerald and Jolene. Okay, Jolene, and then Chelsea. I'm looking forward to collaborating with my neighbor, Debbie, on this email. Charles, see, and then I'm, I'm looking forward to writing my email. And also, would you please notice that Hava in the email has just said that she needs apparently an access code for getting into the Google Drive. So it'd be nice to help her find the document. I, actually, I, I clicked on the one in the chat and it works. So my next question is, if can I just copy paste the Absolutely. Google Drive? send it to somebody else and they won't need a passcode or anything to get into it? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. Or you. go to the River Road Community Organization. You won't have a, a, a ownership issue there. That's where I originally clicked on it and it did say I needed an access code. So For River Road CO? That's... Maybe, I, maybe I did it wrongly. Anyways, I, I got in, so that's, that's okay. Good. Catherine and then uh, Dylan, if you want to speak, you're leaving this meeting. And you. Sorry, uh, I'm going to get busy on my uh, my email. Thanks, Catherine, <laughs> that I'm going to send. I, I love it, everybody. Uh, so I'm leaving this meeting determined to come back. Thanks, <laughs> and then, and then, uh, Harry, and then Barry. Yeah, I'm I'm inspired by the turnout tonight and um, the the obvious dedication that everybody has here to preserving our natural resources. Thanks, Harry, Barry, and uh, Don. I don't think, and then Gary. I think. I, I only my question is: so if we don't get testimony in by five thirty, it's moot. We don't get to do it at all. It depends on whether we get the planning commission to hold the record open for a week, and they usually do. Okay. Send it if you can earlier. And right. we'll Thank you. Uh, Guaranteed before 530, hopefully after works too, but within a week. Yeah, Lynn, is that a question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell Hava, uh, the third time's a charm that, uh, that John put up. Um, it's a PDF, but you can cut and paste freely into your own document. It's very easy. She asked if she could then forward what she downloaded to her other people. And the answer is yes. And you probably can cut and paste the whole PDF if you get yes. it off of you. Gary, uh, yeah. we haven't heard from you. And then we're going to go to John and Claire and be done. And Julie. So oh. I'm going to write an email. Uh, but my skills are limited into finding the right address. If I send it to River Road Organization, can somebody there send it on if I can't find it? Gary, um, it's, it's in that document. It's in that document. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye. You bet. Thanks, Gary. John, Claire, Julie, you're out. I'm I'm through clear calling. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for all the bad links, but I hopefully you can get to one of them. Um, I appreciate you sticking with us. The, the problem with land use is we have 50 years worth of legislation, um, policies and, and, and regulations set by the DLCD, all the land use 
code written by the cities, and then all the legal appeals to Luba and the Court of Appeals all conglomerated together. It's a great opportunity to make money as a land use attorney. We did our best to try to um, distill it so it works for you and hopefully you got something worthwhile out of it. Thank you. Julie, you go next. Oh, great. I just want to say thank you, everybody. It's really an inspiration to live in our neighborhood and know so many people care about our beautiful Greenway. Thank you. Great. Um, I just wanted to suggest that if you'd like to send a copy of CC, your email to co-chairs at riverroad. Uh, whatever our email is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we would love to see what you know have some some other you know proof co-chair um, at riverroadco.org thank you and i really love seeing all of this interest and participation thank you for all your preparation that's that not the right point. email i'm writing it again and brenda you're the only one who has to sign out now Co-chairs at River Road. CO. There's a CO in there, I think. Yeah. I got it in. There you go. Thank you. Brenda, it's not plural. It's co-chair singular. Well, do John's. I was just put okay. Because he was just reading it and I can't do it by reading. That's why okay. I well, check out. We gotta go. Thank, Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Guys. Bye.